the title of today's service is called Redeemed. What does that mean? To be redeemed means that you're bought back. You were paid for, you know that, right? It means that you were recovered and you were restored. It also means that you were saved from sin so that a promise could be fulfilled in your life. You know, when God looked for a man to redeem man, he could not find a man. So God became a man. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For God made Christ who never sinned to be offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That's how we are redeemed through Jesus. Today I have some stories that I want you to hear of some amazing people in our church that God has redeemed their lives and they want to give God glory. Let's give it up for the people that are coming out. All right. Brother Wes, introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is <laughs> Wesley Rep. Uh, most of you know me as the Door Man. <laughs> was born in uh, Akron, Ohio, in 1959, and uh, was brought up in a Catholic family by my mother, the saint, my saintly mother, who is up there now. And uh, up until the eighth grade, I went to Catholic school, and I mean, followed as much as I could, whatever. And uh, then I got out of it from about uh, 13 to about 20. Then I got married, at first tour. And uh, I uh, <clears throat> uh, fell out of it. Uh, I was in it 20 to 20 to 37. Fell out of it again. And then uh, just uh, my mother did the best she could, but, you know, kept falling out. And then moved out here in 2006 and uh, lived good, had a good job. Lived good, no, no church going at all. Didn't, didn't need that, and, or so I thought. So my sister Cindy, back in Ohio, has a special needs son named Travis. That's a good looking man right there. And he Googled churches and he told Cindy, I've found this great Bible-based church in Las Vegas, 16.3 miles from your house. <laughs> you need to tell Wes about it. And I'm like, do that. I'm... I'm good. I'm, I'm suave, debonair. I don't have a lot of hair, but I'm, I'm that in a bag of chips. I don't, I don't need, man, I'm, I'm, I'm it. So that went on for like four or five years. And then, uh, so February 21st, February 6th, 2021, pulled up in front of the bag check area, got out and a strapping lad, Derek Demer, a short guy, six, seven, go up to him and he goes, uh, well, come on in. And I signed in and then I came into the sanctuary. I sat down right there, right beside Manny, four seats away from Manny. And Manny, my friend and brother, is up there hooping and hollering, praise Jesus, standing up. And I'm looking over and go, this guy is cray cray. <laughs> so after service was over, he gets down and I go, dude, if you're not gonna praise our Lord and love Jesus, why don't you just go home? And so he got Monty, another parishioner. They prayed over me right there. I was moved to tears. I was like, who does this? This is kind of weird, but great. So then uh, the next weekend, I signed up for volunteer stuff to volunteer. And they said, well, since you're kind of shy, we should make you a greeter, work on your people skills. <laughs> I said, that's a good idea. So I've been, you know, did that. We did some food drives. And I was just amazed at Debbie and Timmy, the way they had this thing organized. We'd get here at six and by eight o'clock, we get everything ready and we're giving, serving 200 to 250 cars. I mean, all the volunteers just so humble and not look at me, what I'm doing, but they're just like doing it. And it was such a cool thing because nobody asked for, oh, look at him, he's doing that. No, it was just everyone was so humble and giving, uh, you know, and, and. And there was a point where, I mean, you got really involved in the beginning. You oh, yeah. were really being a part of everything. And then something happened, Wes, where one day you came up to me and you said, uh, I, I, was I can't a meathead, be meathead. And I said, uh, pastor, I, I got to quit. After five, six months, I got to quit the church. I remember my past and uh, wasn't a murderer, rapist, nothing like that, but, but I was a pig. And uh, I said, I got to quit, man. I, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve his grace, his love. I, I got to go. And he pretty much strong armed me and said, no, you're a, you're reborn. You're, you're a new creation. member of our church, a new creation. And he said, remember when 
Satan reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. And so while with that, it was like, I got this, I'm good. Then I'm in my, uh, I decided to sign up for the uh, theology classes at Valley U. And I'm in my fifth one now. Uh, and they're three month classes, so this has been a while. And John Carpenter, my friend and my teacher, two things. The first, one of the first classes, he goes, uh, worry's a sin. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Willis? What do you mean worry's a sin? <laughs> what, I mean, what, what, who, who knew? Who knew? Well, he knew. And, and then he also said, God's got this. He was in an accident and couldn't make his, well, he made his uh, meeting, but, but he was delayed a little bit, but he, God's got this. So I'm like, holy cow. And little did you know that when he was telling you that, he was telling you something <clears throat> prophetically because not too long after that, something happened. He was setting me up for this. Uh, Went to the hospital, and uh, that's why I didn't greet for a while. And I owe 32 people 16 door openings, so I'll get to that. <laughs> but uh, I had pneumonia and a collapsed lung. I was in the hospital two weekends ago. And so my lung doctor comes in, and he goes, it's not pneumonia. It's just a collapsed lung. And I went, "Woohoo!" He goes, well, there's a tumor down there, and it's pushing on my lung to make it collapse. He said, it's big, it's ugly, and we got to get it out of there, and it's angry. And I, and I looked at him, and this is in the hospital. And I go, well, I got a win-win. He goes, what do you mean you got a win-win? I go, well, I'm remembering Pastor Russell maybe three weeks ago when he was feeling down and they told him, uh, or God told him, he, told, he asked God, either heal me or take me home. And God goes, yes. <laughs> so, so I was telling my lung doctor, I said, I'm win-win. If he gives me three to six months, I get to meet my Lord and Savior and his son, Jesus Christ. And uh, I get to see my mom again. But if he gives me 16 to 20 years, if he gives me 16 to 20 years, then I'm good. I've got this. But, but my attitude is, is all about, you know, I, I'm not worrying. God's got this. I kept hearing John right behind me. God's got this. Amen. And uh, I keep volunteering. The church has had many events and I sign up for everyone. I'm in a great men's group. I mean, I got all the love and support. I mean, I got phone calls. I got, I got people visiting me in the hospital. You didn't, but you called me. But he called me. He called me. He did call me. So, so Thanks, that's all Wes. good. But, Appreciate that, man. <clears throat> no, I mean, and, and so if you're going through anything, anything, let God handle it because he's got me. He's got me. He's, he's, he's got everything about me and I'm, I'm okay with it, whatever happens. Hey, Wes, if somebody, you could speak to somebody here or even online, they're struggling with health issues. Maybe it was some bad news. What would you tell them in this time? I'd tell them 22 months ago, I didn't have this. I have it now. I'm, I'm a reborn human being and, and I love my life. I love my church and just let, let God work his miracles through you. And like I said, no matter what happens, I'm good to go. I think what you're saying is that you really found the love of God. Oh yeah, yeah, I kind of, yeah, I'm a believer. Yep, huh? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, and, and, well, and being a truck driver, my mouth has been atrocious, but I'm, but I'm better now. I, I slip now and amen. then, but, but I was with my kids and I said, we were at dinner, I said, gosh, gee whiz and golly. And they went, what is, you know, but I'm learning. So I'm still a work in progress, but, but I'm good to go. Love amen. you all. Thank amen. you amen. for all Thank your you, support. Wes. Love you, brother. Can we give God glory for what he's done in these people's lives? Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. You know, I can relate to every single one of those people because I was broken too. I have a testimony. It's not going to be that long. But I came out here in 1994. I was broken. Thought, you know, my love would get me through the hard times of my marriage, but it just wasn't enough. Living on the strip, working on the strip, you, you get caught up in this city, man. It will just eat you up and spit you out. First year I was out here, me and my wife were separated, ready to have a divorce. And I came to a point in my life where I had lost everything, you guys. I lost my self-respect, I lost my dignity, I was unemployed, I was homeless. I didn't have Jesus. And I remember one day, 
just like all these people, one day I surrendered. And the Lord told me, he said, Russell, if you'll just give me your life without conditions, I'll do more in your life than you could ever do. And I remember it was October, 1996. And I said, God, I surrender. I give you my life. And in that time, I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I remember, uh, it's so awesome that, Chris, can I have you stand up right now? This is a very good friend of mine, Chris Berry and her husband, Ray. They were there for me in that time when I had nothing. And when I surrendered, God put them in my life. And they were like, kind of like a spiritual mom and dad to me. And if it wasn't for the kindness in their heart, I don't think I'd be here today. But you know, the key in all of our testimonies here today is that we had to surrender. That's the key. You know, there's power in the blood of Jesus. You know that? Come on. But do you know there's power in your testimony? Look what it says in Revelations 12, 11. It says, and they defeated him. Who's him? The enemy. By the blood of the lamb, by the power of their testimonies, and they did not love their lives as to be afraid to die. You know, that word testimony in preparing for this Sunday, I looked it up. And in the Hebrew, there's three letters that spell the word testimony. The first one is called A-N, and it represents the I, or it means to reveal. The second is called Dalet, and it represents a door or a pathway. And then Tav represents a cross or the covenant. So basically when you're testifying of Jesus in your life, what you're doing is you're revealing the pathway to Jesus. Every one of you has a powerful testimony that you can share. You might not be a theologian. You might not know every word in the Bible, but can I tell you something? God has given every single one of you a testimony to testify. And that word testimony also means to do it again. So when you're telling people your testimony, what you're doing is you're prophesying. Everything you heard here today, you might know somebody or you might be one of those people that says, you know what, that's for me. You know, you can grab a hold of that. Say, Lord, do it again. Do it in my marriage, Lord. Do it in my heart, God. S set me free from this addiction. Restore my marriage. But that only comes when you surrender. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity right now. There's some of you that have never surrendered to Jesus. You've been trying to do this thing all in your own strength. You know, the definition of insanity is doing it the same way over and over and expecting it to be different. God wants to do something different in your life. And then there's some of you that you do know the Lord, but you're having a hard time surrendering in those areas where he's asked you to surrender. And if that's you, I want to give you an opportunity. Come on, sis. If that's you, I want, this, this sister's coming up. If you want to come up, come on. If God's moving on your heart right now, coming up here doesn't mean you don't know Jesus. It means I want to, I want to surrender my whole life. Come on. If that's you, come on. I'm going to wait for you. God's doing something right now. God is doing something right now. Come on. Wow. This didn't happen in the first service, you guys. God is moving right now. God is moving right now. Come on, come on, come on. You know, the first thing love is, is patient. I'm gonna wait for you, okay? Come on, come on, come on, Jesus, come on. Come on, Jesus, come on. God's gonna set you free today. He's gonna give you victory today. Come on, come on, church. Man, come on, come on. Wow, come on. Come on, this is revival, church. This is revival. I want you to know I love you guys so much. But God loves you more than anybody. We're going to pray right now as a family. Amen? Repeat after me. Say, Father, I surrender. Jesus, I give you my life. Fill me up with the power of your Holy Spirit and give me the power of my testimony. I receive and I believe in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people can say,
Amen. Can we worship the Lord together? Let's give God some glory.